On March 28th of this year, a dual Genoa system was benchmarked in Cinebench R23, and yeah, it got a really big score. But it did not set the world record. Technically, it is only in 7th place right now, and a large part of that is despite Gracemont fanboys going crazy over Cinebench all the time lately, although they were curiously silent during the Rocket Lake era, there really is a drop-off in scaling past around 64 cores in Cinebench. In fact, Cinebench can't even really utilize more than 256 threads right now, which means it's really not a good benchmark for modern server and soon modern workstation systems. That means that that Genoa system that only came in seventh place, it was basically functioning like a dual 64 core or in total 128 core system overall. And that score in Cinebench though, it was still good. It was 108,000, which seems pretty typical, honestly, for a faster clocking, but not pushed to the limit Genoa system. But what would Zen 5 get? Well, I will tell you, what you are looking at here is a benchmark of early Zen 5 silicon, specifically a dual socket system that is comprised of two 64 core Zen 5 turn CPUs getting a score shattering AMD's current Cinebench record. And remember, the majority of the top Cinebench scores are gotten by systems using liquid nitrogen, whereas this didn't use anything but standard air cooling based on what I'm told, and it was early silicon, non-final, and already shattering all current AMD world records and almost taking the top spot itself. And just to be clear, I have the full Cinebench screenshot and more information, but I can't share the entire desktop of the system that ran this test because, well, it just would not be safe for my source. But I do have more information that I'm going to share with you, like the cache configuration of Zen 5, what this score means for the overall likely IPC of Zen 5, and more. But first, an ad from a sponsor. Jessie here loves sticks, but it definitely wouldn't be healthy if I just let her chow down on them all the time, as much as she would like to. The same is usually true for reasonably priced instant meals for humans. It's easy to feel stuck looking for something that's quick to cook, tasty, healthy, and cheap all at the same time. Well, unless you consider Vite Ramen, this piece of content is sponsored by Vite Ramen. Vite Ramen is a healthy, tasty, and shelf-stable food crafted by an American startup that offers a ton of options for eating healthy, like their classic packages that make it easy for you to add protein and other ingredients of your choice to make a complete, hearty meal, or their Ramen Go packages that offer a healthy, microwavable option for those who truly only have a 15-minute lunch break, whether at the office or at home. Click on the link in the description and use the offer code BROKENSILICON to save 10% on a variety of different products, including special bundles just for Moore's Law's Dead fans, raw nudes if you want to make up your own recipes, and other food products, cooking utensils, and more. And when you order this spring, know that Vite just shut down for three months and relaunched their entire operation to improve speed, customer service, and just to improve things in the back end so they can keep up with how popular their product has become. So Supporting them helps support me, and even just clicking on the link below makes a big difference, but I really do like their product and I recommend it, so if you're hungry for something that's healthy, cheap, and easy to make, check out Vite Ramen and use offer code BROKENSILICON today. All right, then let's just continue where we left off before the break. Yep, I have a Cinebench score of a Zen 5 system. I am not going to show the entire score to protect my source, but I can confirm that it is over 123,000, as you can see, and that this is a dual 64-core Zen 5 system, and that this source told me specifically that it has 8-core chiplets per CPU, meaning that it is 8 cores per core chiplet times 8. 64 cores. And, well, I also have some information from Windows Task Manager that was used on this system. As you can see, at least with what Windows is reporting of this sample here, Zen 5 seems to have the same amount of L3 and L2 cache compared to Zen 4, but it does have a combined L1 cache per core that is 80 kilobytes. For those who don't know, Zen 4 had 64 kilobytes of L1 combined per core. So whatever AMD is doing to get this score, it doesn't seem to be brute forcing with tons of more cash bolted on like what Intel did from Alder Lake to Raptor Lake. And 
Well, I can also say that at least this sample was boosting to at least 3.85 gigahertz. I don't know what the average clocks were during the benchmark, and I don't know if it's boosted above 3.85 gigahertz. But what I do know is when I look at similar 64 core Genoa CPUs, they don't seem to be rated to boost that high. So already we're seeing confirmation of what I've already leaked that Zen 5 does get a clock speed bump, at least in max boost clock. And yeah, the base clock though of this early silicon, this early sample was 2.3 gigahertz, which is really what makes this score so impressive. Let me just lay it out for you why it's impressive. This Zen 5 sample is early silicon with a lower base clock than the Zen 4 system I'm comparing it to. A base clock around 5% lower. And yet, despite the Genoa system technically having 192 cores, meaning about a third of those cores weren't being used, and so it could select its top two-thirds highest boosting cores and spread out the heat better, this Zen 5 Platform won by around 15%. Percent, And so there you go. That's really impressive. And let me now just summarize what I'm leaking today. So the sample that I leaked this score from today had a 2.3 gigahertz base clock. In comparison, the Zen 4 system actually had a higher base clock, making this impressive. Although it is already boosting higher than similar Genoa systems further suggesting that Zen 5 does get a clock speed bump. And there is an increase of L1 cache per core for Zen 5 compared to Zen 4, but at least based on what Windows is reporting here, the L2 and L3 cache per core remain the same. And, well, my source confirmed that this is a dual 64-core platform with each CPU having eight CCDs, meaning it is eight cores per core chiplet, at least with standard Zen 4, as I already leaked, uh, standard Zen 5, <laughs> as I already leaked. And this system scored over 123,000 in Cinebench R23, around 15% better than that Zen 4 system that had a higher base clock and was able to use its best two thirds of cores. And so accounting for the fact that this is an early Zen 5 sample with low base clocks, and the fact that the Zen 4 system I compared it to could cycle between more cores, I think it's fairly safe to conclude Zen 4 has a, at least a 20% IPC increase, as I already leaked, but it does not seem like it's 30% or something. At least no one that I've talked to at AMD says that, and this score does not suggest that. It's early, we'll see, but that is still what I'm thinking. A bit above 20%, and anything above that would surprise me, but I can't entirely rule it out yet. And uh, yeah, based on this impressive score, Zen 5 seems entirely on track for an early 2024 release, just like my other sources already told me. And Turin Dense, well, this is a little extra one for you guys, utilizes actually a unified 16-core CCX for its CCDs. Remember, Bergamo uses two 8-core CCXs on a single Zen 4C chiplet. I guess we have a unified 16-core CCX with Zen 5C, and what that means is because, at least this is what I would conclude, because the difference between Zen 5 and Zen 5C is for the most part, the cores are just a little more densely packed and there's less cache. Fundamentally, the design is the same. Zen 5, Zen 5C are pretty much the same. A lot of sources call Turin and Turin Dense the same thing. Turin, but some of them have less cache and more cores. That means that AMD has already designed 16 cores as a CCX on 3 nanometer, and I have no reason to believe eventually they couldn't do a standard Zen 5 16 core chiplet if they wanted to, if they could fit it in certain systems or in certain uh, packages. And so there you go. I think Zen 5C is going to be really high performance, even better compared to standard Zen 5 than Zen 4C was to Zen 4. And AMD has, as I already suggested in my previous Zen 5 leak, designed several different CCX sizes for Zen 5, meaning even though I believe they're going to start with 4 nanometer 16 cores on desktop early next year, I can't rule out that they may go larger when 3 nanometer uh, yields improve at TSMC. And so there you go. This leak I put out today, I believe provides proof of what I already leaked a couple weeks ago. Now I had this information over a week ago, but I wanted to give it a week to sit there to provide some safety to my source. But now I'm Happy to communicate it to you all. Zen 5 looks like at least a Zen 4 performance increase again, just a little over a year after Zen 4 came out. And I think this is a huge problem for Intel, in all honesty. Yeah, look, Arrow Lake may, based on what I'm hearing, be 
higher performance on desktop than the initial launch of Zen 5. But the initial launch of Zen 5 might be there half a year before Air 8 comes out. And don't forget that it will be on 4 nanometer. The same family of node that Zen 4 uses right now, meaning AMD is going to launch something 25 to 35% better than what they have now without really having to spend any more to produce it. And by the time Aero Lake comes out, AMD will have V-cache variants for Zen 5, and they may even have 3 nanometer higher core count variants as well. And so all I have to say about Intel is you cannot afford any more delays. I heard Aero Lake could come out mid, maybe even the first half of next year. That better happen, Intel, or I think you're in a ton of trouble here, especially when you consider Zen 5 will be launching to a mature, eventually cheaper platform with cheaper DDR5 costs. A lot of the advantages Raptor Lake had will be gone, and well, yeah, so should you just not get Zen 4 anymore? No, I, I don't think that's true. Look, you should only ever be buying things when you need them. If you need a good new CPU, you get a good deal on Raptor Lake or Zen 4, get it now. But just know Zen 5 is coming about a year from now, maybe even less. And then Zen 6 is coming maybe a year or so after that. So if you wait for Zen 5, I think Zen 6 actually might be an even bigger, more fundamental uplift than Zen 5, and I think you'll just be stuck in the waiting game forever. But just rest assured that if you can wait, there is always something better around the corner from AMD. And uh, yeah, thanks for watching this video. If you want to stay tuned and make sure you don't miss those upcoming leaks from me about upcoming Zen 6 and Arrow Lake launches from AMD and Intel, make sure you subscribe to the Moore's Laws Dead YouTube channel and ring that bell button. And also consider Consider supporting us on Patreon. Our patrons get ad-free, exclusive, hour-long die shrink videos looking at specific subjects that our fans vote on. And you also get early ad-free access to video versions of Broken Silicon, a custom RSS feed, the ability to ask guests and me questions on the podcast, free questions for loose ends. There's tons of exclusive content out there for you if you support us on Patreon. We cannot do this without growing our Patreon this year, I feel, because I really do want to increase quality and bring out even more types of content, but we got to be able to to afford it. But anyways, no matter what, if you made it this far, thank you for watching.